But in 1995, you had an amazing uh, moment that still, you know, is talked about to this day in the world of hip hop. Suge Knight in Death Row is in the building and Suge makes the infamous statement, if you don't want um, an executive dancing in your music videos, come on over to Death Row. Where were you? At the time that that statement was made, and did you realize in real time the gravity and the enormity of that moment? Because that truly has become one of those moments in hip hop. Well, okay, the Source Awards I had started back in in ninety one, you know, and it, it started as a, a day on Yo MTV Raps. You know, we we were doing like a, a year end wrap up magazine issue the best of hip-hop 91 and we came up with the idea to kind of put awards in the magazine the best new artist the best album things like that and you know nobody was recognizing hip-hop no award shows were doing anything they would just play play you know the hip-hop community or you know even the grammys they had a rap category but you know the nominations in those years were were, were awful you know, the worst, not nothing authentic. And uh, the people that really deserved to be recognized weren't being recognized. So that was my original impetus for the Source Awards, you know, was let me create something where we can, you know, celebrate this amazing culture and recognize all these incredible people that are contributing to the culture, artists, producers, DJs, you know, other parts of the culture. And so I had the idea, like, I'm, I want to turn this into a real award show. Um, so in 94, I was able to make that happen. Um, I had brought in a guy named Mike Elliott to work with me on helping develop the Source brand into other areas. And so he and I worked really closely in um, developing and planning out the first Source Awards. So 94, we did it at, at the... Uh, theater at Madison Square Garden with 5,000 people there. It wasn't televised, but I mean, it was an incredible night and um, people, everyone from hip hop was there. Everyone was so excited. They couldn't believe it. They're like, damn, we got our own award show in this big ass theater. I mean, this is real. And, you know, everyone from, you know, Russell Simmons to Queen Latifah. I mean, you know, Tupac was there. Um, and, um, so there was a lot of excitement I, and I was really able to do that because of the relationships I had built up with all these, these people, you know, the Jay Prince's and the Suge Knight's and the, you know, the Lior Cohen's and all the people that were kind of making moves, you know, running the big labels and stuff. And I went to them and said, Hey, look, you know, this is my vision of what I want to do. I think this is good for all of us. And they supported me. And um, that 95 show was the first televised show. So after the first one, we figured out, okay, we're going to try to get this on TV. And we, we, we figured out how to hire a syndicator to get it on to, you know, the NBC station in New York and the Fox affiliate in Detroit or whatever. That's how syndication worked. And uh, we had to pay them to get the show out to all these spots. And we had to, you know, sell ads and stuff like that, sponsors. And But um, I went to all the main label guys again. And I was like, this is even bigger now. We're going on TV. I really need everybody to come to the table. And and you can see everybody did. Every, everyone was there that night. Um, I will say that Suge was, you know, really my, my biggest supporter in 95. Um, if you recall that opening set, you know, with the death row medley, everyone performed with the jail cells and all the you know, explosions. I mean, he spent over $100,000 on the set alone, you know, which... You know, when you're producing an award show and you got a small budget, you can't afford to do stuff like that. So that helped helped bring the whole quality production level of the show up by a lot. And nobody else spent that kind of money on their sets. Um, so I have to, you know, say he was really 
a, a big factor in helping make that show show happen so successfully. Um, so as far as what you know, as far as what happened, like you know, I was there, of course, at every Source Awards. I was, you know, I put the whole show together. I, you know, from who's performing, who's presenting, you know, who's sitting where, and in the audience, all that. I was involved in in, in managing all of those things and and anyone that ever knew me like you would never find me at any source awards like just sitting comfortably in the office i mean in the audience you know watching the show i was moving and running around from the backstage to the side to outside to in the theater and whatever just trying to keep track and make sure everything was was going smoothly so i think when when suge went up and said what he said I was in the back of the actual theater because I wanted to see, you know, what was going on with the people. Like, you know, it's 5,000 people, it was packed, and I just wanted to kind of, you know, catch a vibe of what was going on out there in the audience. And I was standing in the, in the back when uh, he went on stage for that. And of course, you know, when he said what he said, you know, the audience, this is majority New York people that were there, you know, the very front of the theater, those front sections, those were the industry, the labels and the artists and the people that were invited or whatever. And, and the rest of the theater, the other 4,000 people were people that bought tickets that were mostly from the New York area. So obviously, you know, the crowd was pro New York and, and you know, you can hear some of the boos and everything when he goes up there and, and, and says that. So immediately I'm like, man, I better get back backstage and just, you know, see what's going on, make sure everything's cool. And I can remember going back and on, you know, the, the theater there, they have like stairs. There's a few different levels in the backstage of, of the theater there. And there's like stairs going up and down. And I can remember going up on one side of the stage and there was like, you know, 50 death row guys running up and down, you know, kind of like just rah-rah and just, you know, through, through the back, you know, through these stairs in the backstage. I went over to the other side of the stage and that's where Puff was and he had a bunch of people around him and everybody was all, you know, upset about it and, you know, people were, you know, were upset and, you know, but to his credit, you know, Puff took the high road and, you know, I talked to him and he, you know, he told me he was going to try to calm things down or whatever and, you know, he said some things to try to smooth things out but, it, you know, it was really Snoop when he went back up a little later and, you know, went off on a, on a crowd, you know, y'all don't love us. Y'all don't love, you know, death row and blah, blah, blah. You know, that really helped turn the energy around in the room that night, you know, because it was real. And, you know, even though it was New York, you know, people knew, you know, people still listened to, to, to Snoop and Dre and, and, you know, they were the biggest thing out at the time. So there was no denying that people loved their music um, despite what had happened. So, um, you know, the thing about that show, a couple of things. I mean, first of all, you know, it's been sort of mythologized over the years and there's been a lot of misinformation, in my opinion, spread about it. I mean, there was no fights that night. It wasn't a punch thrown Nobody got shot, stabbed, nothing like that. There was, you know, some rah-rah, angry stuff, but everything ended up cool. Um, you know, going into that show, this is August of 1995. Um, there was no, nobody had any idea that, that um, Tupac was going to be getting out a month or so later and joining Death Row, meaning like, there was no beef going into that night. Death Row, Bad Boy, you know, everybody was cool. And um, so it wasn't like, you know, I was worried going into that night, like, oh man, there might be some problems or whatever. You had, there was no idea that that was the case. The beef, of course, had started with Pac and Big and Puff when he got shot in 94 and then went to jail and he started, you know, talking about it and, and pointing a finger at, at Puff and Big, and that's where the beef was between Tupac and them. But at the time, Death Row wasn't affiliated with Tupac. Um, I'm sure probably Suge had been going to visit him and working on it, but nobody knew that. So, you know, in my opinion, where things actually go left and, 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 and things turn violent 
is a month or so later in Atlanta when when uh, uh, Suge's man and, and and my guy Jake Robles, I knew him really well. He was a you know he worked for for Death Row and he was like you know he was a dude from the streets, but he was doing promotions and 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 he was sharp and uh, and he was the one that got killed outside that Jermaine Dupri party in Atlanta, and that's when the beef becomes really serious and violent. I don't think that month or two after the Source Awards really was any real problems, you know. Might have been some people's ruffled feathers a little bit behind what was said, but um, the whole thing that sets it off is that situation in Atlanta, and then everything gets, you know, really, really serious from there. Yeah, these moments have taken place far too often in hip hop. And, um, you know, they're the perfect storm setting off a chain of events for a bunch of things to come. But switch topics for a minute with me. GQ magazine. Everybody knows this magazine. It's an institution in American culture. For their 50th anniversary, they actually named the source as one of the 27 things that changed men's lives over the last 50 years. Number one, did you know that type of recognition was coming? And two, how did it make you feel? No, I had no idea. And I have that article framed. Uh, yeah, absolutely. On Congratulations on that. Yeah, I mean, you know, this is the top 27 things in the past 50 years that have changed men's lives. And, you know, there was some pretty... You know, we were in some pretty big company, um, so that was that was pretty that was pretty dope. I had no idea, um, but it was a great it was a great you know recognition to to have. 